Okay, so we're going to talk about the Muslim yeah, family no, been... uh, in the uh, terror attack that happened in London, Ontario with a vehicle attack. Um, and there is a New York Daily Post. I don't know who whitewash your view on yourself, but you are POC, my man. Okay, guys, guys. I am not a regular white person, okay? I'm not white. I understand that. I get it. But for me to say that like I share similar struggles with brown people, I think is ridiculous because I have a profound amount of privilege because I look the way I do. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not quite like Will is, but I'm pretty fucking white. It's crazy for me to, I think, say that I'm not so white passing that I have like white privilege in many different ways. It's just, that's just the truth. Do you get it? Do you understand? You are U.S. white, but not a European white? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, listen, listen, listen. In Europe, I'm not white. In Europe, I'm fucking Turkish. That's entirely different, though. That's, that's, that's different. That's like, you know. We're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about in America, okay? We're not having a conversation about me being in, Tur uh, in, in Europe. That's, uh, Europe has entirely different uh, levels of racism. They, they kind of... They kind of invented it, so it's just like they're very good at it still to this day in, in different ways. It's just not the same. Not saying that like America isn't the number one. America is still number one at racism, but you know. The first time you started talking about being white, my EU ass got confused. Yeah. Anyway, maybe in Northern Europe, but you definitely pale as fuck for us Southern Europeans. Yeah, dude, tell, uh, tell Italians, uh, how they feel about, uh, you know, uh, Turkish Muslims, dude. I, I wonder, I wonder how Italians feel about Turkish Muslim, uh, immigrants. I mean, especially for Germany, it's, uh, they feel some type of way very outwardly, but. If you look white, you'll be treated as white in our nation. Doesn't give you the right to double dip and say you experienced oppression, systematic racism, say the N-word. Yeah. Okay. And an absolutely heart-wrenching day in this community. And take a look here as we're standing at the site where the family was killed. And this crowd has really been growing by the minute here tonight. At one point, people were lining both sides of this street. Some people climbing to lay flowers, others openly sobbing. Everyone here just trying to come to terms with the horror of what happened here on Sunday night. And a warning that some of the details in this report are difficult to hear. Kosar Mackey and her family were driving past this intersection at around 8.40 Sunday night. They stopped at the red light and waved at a group of pedestrians, a family of five wearing traditional Muslim dress, who were waiting to cross the street. My husband just rolled down his window and said salam alaikum to him, and he said salam alaikum, and he went. As soon as we turned the way, we got home. Minutes later, we heard the ambulances. Assalamu alaikum, the Arabic greeting means peace be upon you. It was likely the last words they spoke. Hold on. Moments later, police say this pickup truck sped towards the family, jumped the curb. Oh, here, I'll just show this much first. And plowed into them. Police say they were targeted because of their Islamic faith. It's scary because my husband and my children, we walk these, these, um, these uh, sidewalks, and, um, and we have other families too that walk these sidewalks, and it could have been us. That's what I keep thinking. It could have been us. Jen Karp arrived moments later to find bodies strewn dozens of meters down the street. None of them were moving except for the youngest, Fayez Afzal, 
just nine years old. He was found lying on the ground. Crying, where's my family? I want my family. My leg hurts, my hand hurts. We told them that the, there was people helping his family and that, you know, we had, he had to go to the hospital and just, I tell, told him to keep, keep his head down and we were trying to make sure he didn't see his family. It's terrible. The boy remains in hospital and is expected to survive. A family friend says he still doesn't know that his grandmother, his parents, and his 15-year-old sister are gone. So I want to show you guys uh, how the New York Post chose to cover this story. Suspect in deadly attack on Muslim family had no known ties to hate groups. I mean, this goes back to the age old Zach Fox uh, joke. One of his best, uh, unfortunately, I mean, this is like a joke, but it's fucking true. Which is, you know, every time, every time a, a white family or like a white dad is convicted of fucking uh, quadruple homicide, they put a photo of him up like, you know, riding a jet ski or some shit. That's a that's an editorial choice. This is how the photos be looking in headlines when a white man kills his entire family. Always. Always. I mean, it is intentional. Like it's, it's literally intentional. That's on purpose to like remove the, the, uh, the white supremacist undertones from this hate crime against, uh, Muslims is deliberate. Assalamu alaikum. Today's a hard day to think about what this means to Muslims and their families across this country. We've heard people mention this, but it is so common. All of us have gone for walks with our family in this pandemic because there's nowhere else to go. There's places that are shut down. So you go for a walk. And to think that a family going for a walk couldn't make it home, to think that it happened in London, Ontario, which is in Canada, not like that London, casual UK. walk around the block in our neighborhood. Wait, there's would another be one. One's last to think that you can't. He was always walk a nice guy safely down your own street. And to think about what that means for a Muslim family right now, people are talking to their families and saying, you know what, maybe you shouldn't go for a walk. There are people literally thinking about whether they should walk out their front door in our country. We think about what that means. Some people have said, this is not our Canada. And I think about what that means when people say, this is not our Canada. This happened in London, Ontario. I lived in London, Ontario for five years. I loved my time there. I think about the fact that my parents chose to be Canada, our home. I love my home. I love this place. But the reality is, this is our Canada. This is our Canada. Our Canada is a place where 215 little kids were found dead in unmarked graves. Our Canada is a place where you can't walk down the streets if you wear a hijab because you will be killed. This is our Canada. We can't deny it. We can't reject that because it does no one any help. The reality is our Canada is a place of racism, of violence, 
of genocide of indigenous people, and our Canada is a place where Muslims aren't safe. They aren't. They aren't safe. Muslims are not safe in this country. And Muslims wonder, I've spoken to people, they wonder how many more lives will it take? How many more families will be mauled? Mauled! Down the street! How many more families will be killed before we do something? Innocent people were killed while praying in a place of prayer, in a masjid, in a mosque in Quebec, gunned down. A man was, was a Muslim man in Toronto was knifed and killed. In both of those incidents, we know very clearly that it was directly because of hate. It was because of hate. There was so much hate towards someone that they did not know just because of who they were, because of how they prayed, because of what they looked like. That is a reality. People live with that every day. They walk the streets wondering if I will be attacked just because of the way I look, not because of an, of an enemy that I have, or not because of someone that's got a... I mean, Jugmeet is not even Muslim, but he himself personally knows uh, because Sikhs are uh, often victims to Islamophobic attacks by dumbass races who think they're fucking Muslim. And then people always say Islamophobia is just being against Islam. It's not a race. You're not crazy. Yeah, totally, dude. It's definitely not racialized, which is why, like, after 9-11, the first hate crime, uh, the first Islamophobic hate crime happened uh, uh, against a Sikh person. Sikh. I mean, it's sick. That's how you say it. So shut the fuck up. It's not Sikh, right? People always say sick. I say seek and then people say I'm wrong. So shut the fuck up. I'm saying it right. The problem with me, will I be attacked today just because of the way I look? That is a real question people ask. Wow. What, what a life to live. That you've got to wonder about that. And we think about people that left violence they fled persecution. Refugees, they come to this country thinking, I'm gonna be safe here. This is a place of safety. And they're not safe. People unfortunately say you're wrong, whatever you say, my man, that's true. Bruh. Seek. Okay, that's the American pronunciation, I guess. Bro. There are sick people in my fucking chat saying that I'm correct. What do you want? Dude. Dude, why people are fucking crazy, dude? Like, actually crazy. Like, there's some dumb Americans in my chat that sometimes will literally tell me, like, I'm wrong about something that's going on in Turkey. Like, dudes will be like, you don't understand what it's like to live in a Muslim country. It's like, what? Bro, you live in Iowa. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I grew up in fucking Turkey. It's so funny when, when people are just like... It's like, dog, I'm American. I literally know more about Turkey than you do, a Turkish person. Yeah, anyway, I don't want to cover this any further than uh, what I've already done. But this is like... Obvious uh, that that uh, this horrific Islamophobic hate crime happened uh, at a time when, uh, you know, I mean, hey, hey the Islamophobia is just the norm in Western society. So it's not like, uh, it's not out of the ordinary at all. 